Hi again, everybody, and welcome to another Perry's Inside Scoop, part of this uh, three-game road swing for the Orange as they head to Raleigh to take on NC State this Saturday. Coach Brown is with us. Coach, you know your way around uh, Raleigh a little bit uh, way back in the day, right, as a player at Western Carolina. Your debut for the Catamounts was at NC State. Was at NC State, yeah. So it was a great experience. It was um, got to play. We want to get to uh, Philip Rivers, Jericho Cotri. T.A. McLendon, Mario Wong, they had a lot of guys. They've had a lot of good players over the years. All over the years. And then there was a lot of guys from my city where I was born and raised that went there. George Hegeman, Reggie Lawrence, um, Damon Covington, rest in peace. But it was a bunch of guys that went there from the city that were pretty good players also. All right, cool. You take your 4 and one team on the road there looking for back-to-back -back true road wins. That's awfully difficult to come by. We're approaching, Coach, the midway point of the season. and That win at UNLV was so exciting for everybody on, on so many levels. The personality of your team is, is really coming to the forefront. I, I wondered what you thought about that game and what it meant uh, relative to your team's toughness, resilience, uh, bouncing back to win it in OT on the road. Well, it showed that they were relentless and they stuck together. Um, it also showed that um, we could be even more dominant. We put ourselves in that situation from different things that happened throughout the game. But um, I was very thankful and pleased with their, with their relentless effort and their approach to the game. And they just showed how tough they were. So it was pretty cool. I'm fascinated by what you said about going uh, to overtime. Uh, the convention, of course, in sports is if you're at home, uh, you can play, you know, play for overtime because better team's going to win or whatever at home. If you're on the road, this is your best shot. Take it while you can. Um, you kind of elected to go to overtime thinking you've prepared for this and, and let's test that. Yeah, just because we're always talking about the fifth quarter, overtime, um, I just felt as though that's what we built for. I think a lot of teams prepare for four quarters, which is a good deal. Um, but I knew that I was going to put it on the players, you know, and I wanted to give them a fair opportunity. Um, I felt as though our fan base deserved to see a good game and us to go out and compete the right way. We were excited for to go back on defense because we would have had, we thought 23 seconds, three timeouts, and then they took a knee and it was like, okay, cool. So, but um, on to the next though now, you know, we got NC State, so. Sure. Is that part of, uh, you know, the trade off you had said? the best programs are player-led. And as you come on board, you, you, you bring in players that have leadership qualities, you inspire the leaders that are already here, and, and you're building uh, from a team to a program, uh, you move toward being player-led. And if you're player-led, they get some say-so in how you handle some of those uh, game situations. Yeah, without a doubt, they do the ones that you trust, the ones that you trust and you know that they're putting the work in. You know, um, I just trust people for who they are. If I see you working daily, doing the right things and understanding, you know what the game plan is and you're truly committed to the process and our culture, then absolutely. But uh, some of them wanted to do it, but I knew that was just a feel and that was that gut. You know, you had Jackson Meeks who uh, has been playing his butt off, but can coach, just go for two, please, please, please. And it's like, nah, I'm going to count on you to do it in overtime. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I'm sure they all want the two-point conversion that's going to be the game winner in that dramatic moment. As it turned out, Yes, it was dramatic, of course, but it was LaQuint Allen, two rushing touchdowns, two receiving touchdowns on the day, and his perseverance on that last play alone was just so emblematic of who he is and, and the, what the team is. Yeah, it's just like him running that play was like running it for everyone, like I said before, but him giving us the opportunity um, to showcase his talent, to show that we do work, that we are tough. I mean, he done that on a hurt knee, so, you know, he was like hurt. So um, the that kid, he... Uh, he works extremely hard, and I'm just happy that he was the one that got the opportunity to do that for the football team because it means a lot. Sure. As we move to this week, and we said at the outset, okay, four straight dome games to start the year, and you, you win three of them. Then it's three in a row on the road, but this is the only time when it's legitimately back-to-back -back road games. You get in nine in the morning on a Saturday coming back from Las Vegas, uh, turn around to leave on a Friday to Raleigh. What's the tenor of kind of your conversations with the team this week and, and the mood at practice and that type of thing knowing okay bundle right back up and you're right back out there on the road as this group work yeah, there's no days you got to work that's just what it's meant for um it's set up for you guys to work uh do you want to be successful you want to be successful in life you got to work you know it's just a part of it like you it's time to go to work we're not on vacation so we're here to work so they just know it's working that's been the message throughout the week we're coming to work 
it's awesome to see, again, some of your best and most productive players are the ones that embody that the most. The Quinn Allen, Aronde Gadsden, big smile on his face the other night. Yeah, we're, we're here. That we Obviously, we're practicing uh, very hard. We see the rewards of that on the field. Kyle McCord's uh, numbers speak for themselves. Uh, he's, he's been exceptionally productive and, and prolific so far. The decision-making, Coach, how do you evaluate that? Because so much of of what happens, the outcome, whether it's RPOs and who gets the ball and those types of things, that you put a lot of trust uh, in Kyle to to uh, work with his mind as well. Yeah, he's an intelligent kid and he puts the work in. Like we said earlier, it's just about work. I mean, he's in here as if he's a full-time coach. So this kid leaves 9, 30, 10 every night and I understand what he's putting in. So we try to, we put a lot, we give him a lot because we think he can handle a lot um, because he puts the work in and is able to do it. So he just, he exemplifies DART and just what we're about, and um, he's CCT all the way. He's committed, he cares, and we can trust him. So just keep putting the ball in his hands, and, um, you know, we're we going to run the way Kyle McCord runs. Sure. Let's hit the D in DART, and that's detail. And I know no detail goes uh, missed by you and your staff. First outdoor game of the year, mm -hmm. right? Um, is that mentioned? Is it dealt with? Is it talking about shoes? What? what how does that come up, if at all, uh, in terms of preparing here? They have amazing grass. I heard, <laughs> heard they have it is. Bermuda grass. Yeah. So we just practicing on the grass. Sandwich out there, too. So we're excited, to, uh, we're excited to go play on the grass. We're excited to play in that atmosphere that they have there, which is one of the best in college football. I mean, it's going to be a different night. You know, it's going to be exciting. But we just we locked in. You know, we're practicing on the grass. We outside. It's cold here, so yeah. we're just ready to go. Yeah, I know you, the, this is the time of the week where we really start to feel uh, your energy and the, the work put in and, and uh, how it goes. Uh, last thing, just kind of for this week, is the, as far as the inside scoop is concerned, one thought uh, that the fans might uh, have in mind as they watch the game on uh, Saturday night about uh, what's going to determine the outcome here. What's top of mind for you? I'm just trying to up front. I would just say that both sides of the ball up front. I mean, I think they have a really good offensive line, um, and to see if our, our our defensive line be able to go out there and compete with them, and then vice versa, opposite side of the ball. You know, our offensive line versus their defensive line, and then you just need playmakers to make plays. I'm just looking for one more play. Yeah. You know, I just want one point. You know, just one more point. Never want to go in and say, "Hey, we're gonna go blow this team out," or they're gonna blow us out. Just gonna be in the game and just want to compete, and um, you know, just hoping that. Uh, you know, we end up on top. Well, it's not surprising. The two most notable games you've had this year at UNLV, home against Stanford, those are anybody's game the, the whole way. You you know going in, the, the, it's going to come down to the bounce of the ball and the execution of one or two plays potentially. We're still learning how to win football games, and there's a lot of things that we do that uh, almost sets us up to be able to lose the game. So as you're learning how to win f football games and we're building a program, you know, you got to start first learning how not to lose. And that's a big part of it that I think everybody overlooks and just doesn't pay attention to. But learning how to fight, learning how to keep going, and not worrying about it being down. Sometimes, before you'll look at some guys mentally, they they lose before the game's even over because they just kind of give up or just think there's they have no hope. But you know, we just talk about faith and just having that little mustard seed worth of faith. And if you have that, then um, anything's possible. Sure, and the idea of bouncing back from something that doesn't go your way in the game. Coach, thanks. Best of luck uh, on the weekend, okay? Appreciate it. It's the Orange and NC State primetime game Saturday night at 8 o'clock. You heard about it here in the Perry's Inside Scoop. <laughs>